this video is all about the things that you need to keep in mind before you visit Kazakhstan, specifically the Almaty region. So without further ado, let's dive right into it because oh my god, it is minus 7 degrees right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Just Go with Amreen. Good morning everyone. I am still in Kazakhstan. This is my last and final video that I am recording here. But I think I will be releasing this first. So without further ado, let's start with point number one. Let me get visa out of the way. So since 60% uh, or 70% of my audience is Indians. Let me just speak with you directly. We Indians do not require a visa to visit Kazakhstan. We can visit Kazakhstan visa free for 14 days. It has nothing to do with your visa status. In case you are a UAE resident, it has nothing to do with that. If your UAE residency or your UAE visa is expiring in like a couple of months or whatever, it doesn't have anything to do with that. You can still come to Kazakhstan because it has everything to do with your passport that should be valid for six months uh, and not your visa necessarily as for the other nationalities i will leave a link down below in the description box for you to check out plug in your nationality and check out what rules or restrictions you have uh, to visiting kazakhstan honestly kazakhstan allows a lot of passport holders to come to its country visa free point number two when is the best time to come to Kazakhstan. November is not the time to come to uh, Kazakhstan. This is when I am here. I am in November 2022 in Kazakhstan. That to the end of November, not even the beginning. Not the best time. Honestly, I really, really, really got lucky with such great weather that you see behind me. It's, it's generally not the case. It's snowing all the time. It's raining all the time. Your um, your plans can be uh, screwed. So you don't want to come here towards the end of November. The beauty is to see the lakes and the mountains, right? So you are hiking in snow at this point. By the end of November, the lakes begin to freeze. The big Almaty lake was frozen. So not the best time. You want to come May, June, September. October is stunning because it's autumn, it's perfect. You will still get snow in the mountains like Shimbala, even the Big Almaty. You will get snow. You will not get knee deep snow like I got, but you will get snow. Avoid July, August. It's extremely hot and extremely crowded. All the places that I visited, the beauty was that it was so peaceful because there was absolutely nobody there. Moving along, one of the biggest obstacles you'll face right from the moment you board your flight if you're an indian or asian or whatever and you don't speak the language like russian or kazakh you're the biggest problem you're going to face is the language uh, google translate <laughs> is your best friend i said that for like serbia as well if you're a solo traveler you're going to struggle finding people to like mingle with unless you're staying in a hostel and those people that stay with you in the hostel speak English. If you can move past it like me, then fine. But if that is like a big criteria for you, then uh, sorry, you have to miss the beauty. Point number four, you need a tour guide. <laughs> you need a tour guide when you come to Almaty. Simply because if you especially are coming during snow season, do not even dream about driving you don't know the roads out here are really really rough and you need someone experienced otherwise you could you know get hurt there have actually been accidents on the highways because of heavy snowfall low visibility people are not prepared this is the mountain region guys don't forget this this is the mountain region weather over here can change yesterday i was at big almari lake we were one minute we were bright and sunny warm i took off my jacket i took off my scarf and took off my gloves and hat and sitting and having this amazing sandwich five seconds later the sun is just gone beyond the mountains and got cold and chilly and windy really really fast you you don't know that all right you don't know you're not from here so be um, with a tour guide uh, come with a tour guide to all the places do not try to uh, go anywhere on your own this is my strongest most important advice if you want to know which tour guide which tour company is reliable then Leave me a comment and I will help you with that. I'm actually joining two points in one in this uh, in this point. Part of this point is this is the mountain region. I've already uh, said that before. And the climate over here changes very swiftly. 
um, in the sense like you can expect it to be sunny at one moment and then really windy on the other and it can be raining, snowing and warm all at the same time on, in one 24 hours. You have to get jackets, gloves, thermal socks, winter boots, snow boots or winter boots, whatever, hiking boots, definitely hiking boots. You need to get uh, thermal pants, uh, thermal inner wear, a lot of woolen stuff. Now I'll tell you, if you're coming in July, August, obviously you don't need to pack all this, but you still need to pack a light jacket or, or a couple of jackets. It depends on how cold you feel because you will be going into the mountains to explore the lake and stuff like that. And those lakes are at a higher altitude. The Big Almaty Lake is at 2,500 uh, meter altitude. So you want to dress accordingly, you want to pack accordingly. So two parts to this point. One, be prepared for several different seasons in one day in Almaty and if that's the case then you have to pack accordingly. You can still purchase a lot of things over here but boots I cannot stress enough. Please pack your hiking boots, uh, winter boots because if not you could enjoy yourself. There are some people that just come to the mountains in this weather in snow in sneakers. Like, are you, are you even thinking straight? Like, how can you do that? You cannot do that. I fell down twice. It's really not a fun feeling to fall down on rock solid ice. It hurts. Ouch. My friends who are vegetarian, I am so sorry for you. I don't know what to say. I swear, I, I, I looked and looked everywhere. I asked everyone. I uh, have eaten in restaurants and I am so sorry. <laughs> that vegetarians, vegans, you guys are going to have a real struggle to find decent food. Also people who are like low carb diet <laughs> will struggle a little bit because they put carbs in everything and when I say carbs, it's not like rice. I mean, I'm okay with that, but I, some people are not okay with that either. But Rice is still okay. They put like dough and, and, and flour and I don't I don't eat any of that stuff. And yeah, that's wildly available here. <laughs> Alright, so and those who don't eat beef, you better start eating horse meat because uh, they have a <laughs> sorry but I'm just saying, uh, they have a national dish over here, it's called Bish Parmak, which is made with a lot of dough, a lot of dough, um, potatoes, and uh, it's either beef meat or it is horse meat. So, yeah, um, probably you can request for lamb. Oh, another thing that you need to keep in mind, they love their fat. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the weather here. They love their fat. All their meat is cooked with fat. Like, yeah, like really lot of fat. So <laughs> just something for you to keep in mind. What else? What else? Oh yes, halal. Um, I've never had to mention this before because you know I'm not really one of those people who uh, bothers about this. But it is very like in your face here everywhere. Kazakhstan is not officially a Muslim country, but the majority population practices the religion Islam. Hence, all the food, all all the food that you will find here is halal by default. All right, that's everything I wanted to say about food. Now let's move on to the next point. So before arriving here, you need to do two things. Number one, you need to book an accommodation which has a 24 hour help desk or uh, reception. And number two, you need to book your um, airport transfers in advance and ideally through the accommodation that you're staying with. Why I say that is because don't try to get a cab when you arrive because those guys are all scammers and they will take four five times the price of what you're supposed to pay now uh, I paid 8,000 Kazakh tenge when I came uh, for my airport transfers but I have heard that you can pay as low as 3,000 or 5,000 uh, 8,000 was already like more than twice but there are people who would charge you like 50,000 30,000 20,000 tenge please don't fall for those scams um, basically it has to be less less than 10,000 tenge like 8,000 is already too much. All right, just so you have that in mind. I did not buy a SIM card in Almaty, just FYI. Uh, I didn't need it because I had good roaming uh, on my phone. So I did not need to buy a SIM card, but you can buy it either from the airport or if you are getting a tour guide, which you should, uh, then you can tell them in advance 
to you know buy a sim card get it activated and everything so when you land and as you meet them whenever you do and start your tour with them they can give you the sim card right away and it will be all activated and everything currency the currency of kazakhstan is tenge and uh, you might struggle to find this currency in your you know wherever you are coming from so my advice is to get us dollars this is what i did i got us dollars and just to give you some sense of like the conversion i converted 100 dollars which was equivalent to 46500 kazakh tenge and the rate is pretty much the same in all exchanges all right i exchanged it in the city center of almaty i did not do it at the airport please don't do it oh, one more thing if you are going for an all inclusive tour package with a tour company then for your personal expenses you don't need more than 200 dollars in a week this is what i have spent 200 dollars for my personal expenses in the entire week or food or um uh, wine tasting or horse riding or boating at the kolsai lake all this stuff is like personal expenses and not included in the tour um you know in the tour that you will book these are optional expenses and 200 dollars is more than enough last point last point um vlog is almost over be fluid be fluid with your plans be flexible with your itinerary uh ideally four nights and five days is sufficient to visit everything that i covered in um in my entire series which you will see in the following weeks uh four nights and five days is enough but if you are coming here in such adverse weather i would say you need to keep buffer because your plans could get you know screwed like i've already mentioned before because of the weather and plus you'll get some time to chill uh meet some people hopefully who speak english in some pubs and stuff in some restaurants and bars and you can hang out with them You know, it's it's nice if you're a solo traveler, especially to keep your itinerary a little fluid. I am planning a group trip in the first week of May, most likely for four nights or five nights. If you want to be a part of that, then please leave a comment uh, in the comment section so that I know that you're interested, and then I can share more details with you. I'll contact you. I hope you found this helpful, and if you did, then give me a big fat thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell icon. So you don't miss any of my upcoming Kazakh adventures. I will see you guys next week. Until then, stay safe. Take care. Bye, guys. Cheers. Um, what what was I going to say? Do not require a visa to. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> It's so cold. Apricot? Anybody? Hmm. 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 Right. Yeah, I decided to <laughs> do this. If I want to sit and do this outside in the snow, then I have to. <sighs>